Well, that's jolly nice. It gave a tiny foily sound. And look, I think it's a cut half. Let's have a little look. Yup. Well, that's a nice start. I haven't even got my camera and sound stuff together yet. H E. Well, no surprise there. They were all Henrikas for a while. Um, Bennett's a probably a voided short cross. Gosh, which means yeah, Henry, John, Richard, they all were uh, two Henrys. But that's lovely. Well done, Doris. That's a nice start. Hi there. It's the most beautiful day. You wouldn't know it. The last few days have been below, well, freezing conditions all over the country. But howling gales, snow, ice, sleet, and now there's a break. Warm and boiling and lovely. And I've just found that little tiny short cross half, and I've just found another tiny little hammered coin. Even though there's not much on it, half of me wonders if it's even English. Um, what I can see is very strange, um, and really, well, I don't even know if we'll get an ID on that, but it's nice and silver, gave a nice sound, and right next to it's another one, but quite wispy. Now, I've got my Deus 2 settings slightly to a place where I'm more comfortable with them, and um, probably not as sensitive or loud, but it's just more stable, and I've got to keep my ears open. I'm not going to bore you with the Deus 2 today, but I'm, I'm happier with it. But what I may not be happier with is my new sound system. I've got this tiny little speaker, but hopefully it'll be close enough to the microphone to be able to pick it up. So let's have a, let's have a listen. <laughs> it's not working very well. What a pain. <sighs> not working at all. It was in practice. Ah. Um. I've super glued it onto this. I wonder if that's had any effect to it. Well, do you know what? There is a tiny bit of volume coming out, but it's not very loud. And <laughs> let's not waste time with it now. I'm sorry about that. I don't quite know. I'll, uh, quite a lot of you ask me, what speaker do you use and all the rest of it? Well, the answer is I've tried thousands. And the only one which worked any good for a short while was that big one but that's gone on the blink and they're not selling it anymore so anyway look let's just get on with it and i'll keep experimenting i do have one more we could try um but not today anyway suffice to say that it's really well it's very foily sounding and very wispy But it's still in there and it's very faint sounding. I've lowered the audio response as well. So everything doesn't sound like it's on the surface, which it can do. Well, it's about four or five inches, maybe more six. I'm just hoping it's another hammered since well, it's a bit deeper than I thought. I'm finding a lot of lead today. There's a lot of lead, not a bad sign. Okay, it's sounding a bit irony now. Yeah, it's... Well, it's probably because it was circular that it was giving a... It's one of those, it's a swivel of sorts. It's an old iron swivel of sorts. Don't think it's very old. <sighs> Doesn't really matter. I don't really care at the moment. It's just, it's just lovely being out in this. Well, this is quite cool. Gave a nice sound. I found a few of these up here. It's a, it's a lovely buckle and it's got its um, 
it's got its is it integral integrated integral well anyway whatever it is it's got its buckle plate i'm still intact i don't know if there's much if, if there's any design on it but that's just lovely just lovely to find them in that condition I've, as i said i found a few of, of like like this up here i mean these are sort of 1250 i think or you know and now you can see where you know, it's quite actually quite an ornate buckle in itself that's the bit you usually find isn't it by itself not the whole lot like that that's cracking missing the pin you can't have everything but because this ground's so undisturbed that that things just stay in one piece i'm definitely coming to the end of it this is the much quieter part of the field but i've got to do it and i've got to do it carefully so i know which part of the fields to concentrate next time i mean this is a quite a big field um and there's definitely hotter areas, but once I've done the whole lot, then I know where to sort of vaguely concentrate. Gosh, I'm thrilled with that. Well, that's jolly nice. Gave a bit of a big sound, but you can see why. Look, it's a crotal bell. Oh, look, didn't know how, well, it's not full, but it's not far off it. But that's very smooth, very, I wouldn't say crude, but you know, there's nothing, nothing fancy about this one. And because it's got, it's the ones with the drilled holes that are the earlier ones, that's not drilled. That's one of the ones that have been, the, the thing's been cast and it, it gets pulled out at the end of the casting, I think. And that's what forms the lug. So I don't think that, that's not drilled. And it's unlikely to ring as well because well, because it's broken there. But that's not that lovely. <laughs> it's quite wispy, but I've dug up a lot of cartridges and a lot of lead today. And um, it's definitely quieter. That was really uh, quite near the surface. It did sound quite sort of quite close. And this is my, it does support my mole theory. There's mole hills everywhere. This is, um, well, it's just a piece of bronze of sorts, but it's definitely got quite a lot of age to it. I mean, I don't know if it's part of a pot or, I mean, it's got that little rim there that sort of looks like a, which often give crotal bell fragments away but it's not a crotal bell fragment because it's too flat you know it's got some sort of but as I said this ground doesn't get turned over and it's very untrashy so the moulds may have brought stuff to the surface and I've got to dig everything whether it sounds like it's on the surface or deep because anything here could be good Just left this over there. I have also found this. Now, my God, there were horseshoes and there were horseshoes. And I sort of, I knew this was iron fairly early on, to be fair. But it was so deep and giving that tiny bit, quite often, like the nails in these horseshoes do. It was giving enough of a sort of, mm, I just thought I'd better keep digging just in case. And this came out. Now, this is just wonderful. Now, I don't know much about horseshoes. But that to me looks early and maybe it might even be an oxen hoof. So anyone who knows, we'll go and have, I'll ask the, the, the hub on this, but um, that's, it's small and it's just, it just looks old, the shape of it. I just don't know that shape, but that is just cool. That's almost made my day that. And I hate digging iron, like, you know, like we all do. We all hate digging iron, but not if it's iron like that. It's wonderful. There's about eight different lessons to be learnt here and I am secretly, seriously, seriously excited. Um, I've been digging up a lot of lead and a lot of cartridges. I mean, masses and masses and masses. I'm not doing too many live digs as a result. And this is another piece of lead. And I was just thinking, part of me, it just looked like a lead strip. 
I folded over and a bit mangled and God knows what it was about it that made me think this could possibly be something a little bit more interesting. And I started just cleaning it away a bit and just rubbing it off and I noticed that the, the bit that was fanning out had a little bit of a groove to it. And then I turned it over and I haven't completely cleaned it yet and I don't, neither do I particularly want to quite yet, but I noticed a bit sticking out of the flat bit of um, strip of lead. And I don't, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a brooch of sorts. Now, now, part of me is thinking, this is made yesterday, it's a child's lead toy in the shape of a, in the shape of a bird. But just in case it's not, just in case it's older, because flicking through Hatat, the brooch book, you come across a lot of animal type brooches. Now I thought they were all made of bronze or copper, not lead, but they do, they, they, Look, to, but it looks like a pigeon or a peacock or a pheasant or even a hen. Um, it's definitely a bird's face. It's very, very intricately done, which makes me feel that it's actually quite modern. Here it looks like there's a bit of ferrous where maybe perhaps if it is a brooch, a pin might have started. And that does look a bit like a catch to me. So <laughs> might that be a, 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 an early brooch of sorts. I mean, I don't think Saxons made them like this, but I know, I know Romans made them like this, but I don't know if they would made them out of lead, just don't know. But my God, I mean, it's also when you least expect it. I mean, I found a couple of lovely buckles, um, including this one, I'll show you in a second, which was really deep and really wispy. And it's a godsend. I, I, didn't, I don't know why I really dug it, but I wasn't expecting this. And this is just fabulous. I mean, just fingers crossed it's early because part of me thinks it might be made yesterday. But if you know me well enough, I don't count my chickens, even this one, because I don't like to think that it's, that it's good. So I let myself think that it's not good so I don't get let down. But anyway, I don't think I'm gonna be able to concentrate much. Let's go back to headquarters and have a look. Hi there and welcome to headquarters. Well, this is a bit of a noodle scratcher. Um, <laughs> I think it's Roman and I've spoken to some people very recently who know about this sort of thing and they sort of agree with me about the fact that it's Roman as well. Now, the, the main thing it has for it not being Roman is it is made out of lead or some sort of lead alloy. Now, it looks to be quite squashed and I have managed to bend the tail back a little bit, but not too much. The, the rest of it is pretty solid. Now, if it were pure lead, it would be much softer. And even though the head's got a bit of a kink to it, I can't, I'm not gonna try too hard, but I don't think I can bend it back. It's, it's obviously an alloy of sorts and it may have been, um, had some sort of finish on it as well because it's definitely darker there than the, the lightness of the lead um, on, the, on the tail. Now, it just feels like lead. It just got that weight of it being lead. Um, it does have what's obviously some sort of ferrous pin there, which would have gone onto the catch there. Now, just because something's found in a Roman area doesn't necessarily mean it's Roman. This was found where I'm finding Roman bits and pieces, but it gives weight for something being Roman, but it's not the be all and end all. But quite honestly, I can't think what else it's, it, 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 it would be. I mean, on the day, Sorry, I've just been sneezing. I thought it might have been some sort of child's toy or something like you do get in lead, but I'm not so sure. Now, as to what bird it is, I think it's a dove of sorts, if you want my honest opinion. I've looked at peacock um, brooches, oh, sorry, um, online, and they seem to make a bit of a, a bit more of a thing of the, of the fan tail of a peacock. It does like, look like it's got a slightly game bird's face to it, but that, I think, I think that's a dove. It's also very much, Looking at Hat Hat here, it's very much the shape of these Roman bronze brooches. Um, I mean, it's very similar in size to that one and, and, and to this duck one here. Um, I'll show you a picture of some duck brooches now. They are very similar in size and depth and all the rest of it. And these bronze ones date to the, the second century. Now, ah, the Romans didn't make bronze um, brooches out of lead, generally, but does that mean to say that they didn't exist at all? Or may this have been a, a, a prototype made out of lead to see how it, how it would have looked in bronze? I mean, lead being much cheaper, much easier to work with. Who knows? But 
It's not just a gut feeling now, I'm pretty convinced that that's Roman until someone tells me otherwise, and I'm always ready to learn. Someone tells me otherwise that it's not Roman, that then, then, brilliant. Um, the Saxons made brooches out of lead. Um, I don't think it's Saxon. They didn't tend to make, really make that sort of type. But whatever it is, it's a pretty special thing. I've not come across anything in this or online with that sort of configuration, with that sort of bird, that sort of head and that sort of tail. So I'm absolutely bloody thrilled. And I think that's sort of, I think that's a fairly unique piece. Um, it's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Ah, this is why we do this. Anyway, thank you very much for that. And let's go back to the fields. I mean, oh my God. I mean, right, you'll know about it by now. <laughs> I'll still be thinking about it. Now I found this, this was deep. And foily, now I, I, I don't want to rub it too much and um, because it's just a really, really lovely one. Gosh, it looks to be even to be silvered in parts. Um, it's just, it's quite like that buckle we found with the actual buckle plate still intact. It's got that sort of randomness to it there, but it's just got lovely knobs and it's just a really cool thing. It does wonderful little medieval buckle. I'm thrilled with it. So, um, we look, we probably have had a look at that as well now. Core. Cool. What? As I said, I'm getting to the quieter section. I'm in the quieter section. That was a complete surprise. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed it's old. Look at that, another little lovely little buckle. What a cracker. Again, with its um this buckle plate there. Just fabulous. Just untouched ground, I think it must be. That looks like it may be slightly later, but it's just quite crudely done. Has that got any gilding? Has that got a, something on it there? Or is that, I don't think that's a mark. I think that's, um, I don't know, it's even got its rivets in it still. <laughs> this reminds me of the good old days. What a signal. I'm sorry you can't hear it. Deep, 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 but very clean. And high pitch, couldn't, just couldn't get better than that. It's not in there, I know it's not in there, it's still in there, it's deep. It's probably something horrible, but I don't care. It's still in there, nine, ten inches already. Not even that close with the pinpointer still. It might be a bit of horseshoe. I don't know why ho bits of horseshoe fragments sometimes sound so good. I suspect it's a socking great piece of lead. Still in there. <laughs> it's a pinpointer and a half. Gosh. It suddenly gets very clay down here. When you get to this sort of depth, I think I can see it's lead. Right, it's out. Whew. That was deep. Sounded like big, big copper. Sounded like two cartwheel pennies glued together. And here it is. <laughs> Wow. It's a socking great big um, annular brooch, I think. Well, that's exactly what it is. Now, I don't know how old that is. And even though it's wonderful and deep and gave all the right sounds, surprising there wasn't any iron involved in it because that, that there's a bloody great big iron pin to it. Now, I just don't know, that looks very uniform, but did they make 
they make them like that? I just don't know. Wow, I thought, God, my half of me was thinking, is that going to be really decorated? Um, it still might be, but I don't think it is. It needs to be properly cleaned up. Um, but just wait till that Lancaster bomber flies over. But... <laughs> It's not the biggest thing in the world, it sounded like the biggest thing in the world and that was good foot and a half. Probably not as exciting as I thought it was, but whoa. Right, I'm coming to the end of my day, I thought that might be a big hammered coin, look at it. Gave a bloody great sound, it's just a button, but I don't think it's a dandy one even. I think it's too late for that, um, but it's got some Quite nice design on it. Definitely silver, I would have thought, or silvered. Um, that might clean up really nicely. Please with that. Don't think it's very old. Don't, don't think it's a dandy. They're Georgian, aren't they? A bit more showy. You know, that's quite showy. And what a lovely day. Just so nice being out. One of those days it's almost more important being out than finding stuff. And I'm coming to the end of the, where I wanted to come. There's still a bit to go, but I, there's not much in this area. But it's, you just need to do it. You need to get it done. This... <laughs> Talk about the good old days. I can hardly hear this. And it's sounding a bit irony. But it's going all the way round and it's a tiny, tiny wisp. I have been checking the reactivities, I've been changing them a bit, and it's definitely louder. I think you get more falsing with a lower reactivity in a funny way. Um, I may be wrong, but watch this space because I'm having my lesson with my mystery guest in the next video. She's going to show me, oh, <laughs> she's going to show me what to do, how to get this right. It's out already and sounding coppery. Here we are. Well, it's sweet. I think it's just a sort of, a, a sort of a belt mount or a, or a leather stud of sorts. I don't, I think I'm better off. We'll soon see what Kath says. Just having this on much simpler settings. I, I, I like fighting for stuff in a funny way. This was really deep and it's tiny and copper. And maybe with different settings, that um, it might be sounding, uh, 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 it might be like a sort of great big klaxon, but maybe I don't really want that. I want to know the difference between something really deep and, and really shallow. That's the main thing. So I could avoid shallow stuff in areas where I need to avoid shallow stuff. Well, I think that's what it is. I can't think what else. It looks like a little sort of flower. And it's got a little pinny bit there, which had probably gone and pinned it. Yeah, I think that's a leather, little leather stud of sorts. Well, it's getting a bit dark, but what's that? I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, but I don't think it's very old, personally. Hmm. But interestingly, well, I don't know. My gut feeling is not very old. It feels a bit, it feels a bit pressed. Um, and it may have held something in there. Um, by not very old, I th I'm thinking sort of, is it Victorian or Georgian? But quite cool. And having said that, that's a bit crude, all the hatching, isn't it? No idea. Gosh. Well, <laughs> if it is good, which I don't think it is, we'll have a quick look at it when, I, when we do air quarters section. My God, this field. <laughs> It's full of surprises. Now, I can see it. It's a socking great coin. It's either a big Georgian coin or it's a big Roman coin, I think. 
Tista Well it's a big Roman coin That's not Georgian It's a big bloody Roman coin. Now, it looks a bit oddly struck because I can see the legend, but there's a lot of space on either side of it. Now, the other odd thing about it, or cool thing about it, is it's the emperor facing left, and they, you hardly ever get emperors facing left. I think Caligula liked to face left. If it is Caligula, that's wonderful. I don't think I've got a Caligula, but he looks a bit like Nero to me. Um, that could clean up particularly nicely. <laughs> That's just amazing. I'll tell you what we might do. I have, I've done an outro over there and I'm on my way home. I think it is near, I think I can see N-R-O. But um, that's just a bloody brilliant coin and he's facing left. Look, let's go back to headquarters. We'll look at it there quickly. Um, and then, um, and I can say goodbye from there as well. Okay, let's go. Right, welcome back. Um, it is, it is Nero. This is a cracking coin. I mean, if you think that Nero was the, um, the fourth emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, after, of course, you had Augustus, Tiberius, um, Caligula, and then, sorry, fifth emperor, Caligula, Claudius, and then Nero, the last one. He reigned from, I think it was 60 AD to 69 AD. And he, I mean, he's quite a well-known emperor, but greed up about him as well. He's just extraordinary. I mean, a real character um, who didn't really like, he didn't like doing imperial things. He liked playing his lyre and writing poetry and entering loads of competitions. I mean, he went off to Greece for an extended period of time where all the Greeks moved all their festivals and their, their games around so that competing for everything at the same time. I think Nero won sort of a thousand different <laughs> prizes, ranging from chariot racing to um, poetry competitions and all the rest of it. He even won competitions he wasn't entered for. And I think he even won a competition, a chariot race that he fell off. He, he didn't finish. <laughs> he still won it. But um, and my other favourite story is he tried to kill his mother by inventing a collapsible boat and had a dinner party for her and he said goodbye to her very fondly on the shore of the lake um, and she got into the boat which did collapse in the middle of the of the lake um, and she she managed to swim ashore that's Agrippina the younger um, but she was finished off fairly quickly after that anyhow god I digress now um, it is it's Nero Nero Claude Org Germ all the rest of it it's whether, it's what denomination it is. Now, it just looks too thin to be a Cistercius. Here's a Cistercius here. Um, and it's very similar in size and bust and all the rest of it, but not in, not in weight and, and size. And Cisterciuses and asses have the bald head. The Dupondius that comes between the two coins and is a bit of a mixture of both um, has a radiate crown. But I, if I look at an ass here, even though the, 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 the busts of the emperors are very similar size, it's a much smaller coin. Um, but the fact is that also in this one, um, the, die, the, 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 the flan itself that's been used, there's a lot of space outside the legend. So maybe it's just been badly cast. Annoyingly, not annoyingly, but it's got a thick encrustation on it. And I'm just I've done a little bit on that side so that we can get to see who the emperor is. Nero, in this case, obviously. Um, but the other side is completely caked. And I have started managing to, to, to get at it just there. And I've come down to very smooth bronze. So little by little, um, I'll take away that. But the fact that I can't read any legend at all on that side means that it's probably smooth through wear anyway. But we will get a bit more detail on that side. And I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, he is left facing. And emperors don't tend to face to the left. I've, I've talked about this before. But Nero did like to have coins facing to the left. It was one of his things. Um, and therefore, um, not so not as rare in Nero as in, as in other emperors, I don't think. But anyway, that's just a wonderful coin. I mean, I'm finding 4th century bronzes up there. But I'm not finding 1st century bronzes up there. Um, so it just means to that, that, that field, you know, it's got a big time span of Roman finds. And if, it, and if this is Roman, what we found earlier, 
which I believe it is. I mean, that would be second century. So it's going, it's going right through. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to all that. And um, I, we won't get back to the fields because we're done now. And, but I will see you next time. I've been having some cracking outings and some very, I am very lucky. I, I, when, when you tell me how lucky I am, I do know it. I've got some cracking um, fields to go on um, and we're finding some nice things. So see you next time. <laughs>